everybody, this is Skamara from Fitness XD and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you like this video, make sure that you give it a thumbs up below and hit the button next to it, subscribe to know when all of my future videos come out. Today we're going to be talking about Pilates 100, which is a phenomenal core exercise um, and modifications for it because it is very, very tough. All right, so especially if you are doing my monthly fitness subscription, which if you aren't, you can sign up below. You know that this is one of the exercises on our ab circuit for that upper body and core workout. So I wanted to provide to you a deeper look into modifications and how to prevent neck strain specifically with this exercise. And honestly, you can translate this to any core exercise like crunches where your neck is gonna to start to get sore. All right, so first of all, why do our necks get sore? Well, generally when our necks get sore is because we're compensating due to weakness in our core, weakness in our back muscle, or a stiff back. So our neck can't actually be supported by those muscles because they're not doing enough work. And now all of a sudden our neck has to do more work in order to stay up. All right, so that is why. And it makes sense if you think about it these days, we're always on our computer or our phone or watching TV. We're sitting down, we're not really getting a whole lot of movement. And our what basically happens with that is instead of having nice good posture where we're sitting up nice and straight, we start to hunch over like this and then our head moves forward as we're always looking at a computer and a cell phone. And having that forward head movement basically weakens our deep cervical muscles because they're not being forced to keep your head up, all right? So those deep cervical muscles is what then starts to like hurt as you try to keep your neck up during core exercises like Pilates 100 because you don't have that strength. All right, so let's get into the exercise itself and modifications. So if you have it available, I want you to grab like a tennis ball. This is a little foam rolling ball, something about the size of an orange basically um, for head positioning. If you don't, just imagine something there and I'll kind of guide you through it without it. But we're going to lay down on our yoga mats. The first step is going to be to, with, a modifi with this modification, it's going to be to bring our legs up. So I'm going to bring my legs into this reverse tabletop position where my knees are at 90 degrees. And more importantly, I have tucked my butt under. So there should be no gaps here between the ground and the floor. Nice tuck here when I bring my legs up. So you're literally giving yourself a posterior tilt to your pelvis, legs are up. Now, if you've got a bowl available to you, I want you to take it and place it between your chin and your neck. That is the distance where you should be keeping your, your chin relative to your neck. You shouldn't start out like this. You see where my, my head is now forward. You also should not pin your chin down to your neck, that's going to create an immediate further stress in your neck, all right? So if you have to hold something here, that's like that in-between nice position where your head should be in line with your spine, all right? And then the next step is going to be to bring our upper body up into that curvature, all right? So this is where the lack of mobility in your spine really affects you if you don't have um, range of motion between your mid to upper back because we're gonna curve up into a C, all right? So come on up here and you see how I'm lifting from my bra strap up to really be curved. Now with my head, I wanna maintain this position. If you don't, if you don't have this, just make sure that you focus on looking like at your feet right here. You're not looking up. You're not looking between your legs, all right? You're gonna just stay looking at your feet. You can take this off if you've got a good handle on that one. Now, make sure that your tongue, it's important. If you have your tongue pressed against your teeth, your head is going to move forward. And if you have your tongue floating towards where the middle of your tongue is hitting the roof of your mouth and the front of your tongue is floating, then you're gonna have that neutral position you're looking for. So if you don't believe me, try this sometime. Try to get a neutral position and press your tongue against the, your, your front teeth and your head will naturally move forward. So pay attention to your tongue. I know that sounds very weird, but come up here. You have this head position. Now I'm speaking, so obviously my head wants to like naturally come up, 
but I'm gonna try really hard to keep it here as I speak to you guys. Um, keep that nice tongue position. My, I am rounded up towards my upper body and then my arms come out, all right? Now, my legs are still at 90. This is like the easiest version. The more that you extend those legs and lower, the more difficult it's going to be. So just start out with your legs almost close to 90 and then work your way up in progression through this exercise. Proper form to do this, you are going to do 100 reps where you're going to breathe in for a count of five and then exhale for a count of five. Repeat that 10 times and voila, you have Pilates 100. All right, so with a modification, again, come on up, feet come to 90, bring your head up, make sure that you're curving up through that cervical spine, but your head is not like super jutting forward, you're not looking up, it's just in line with this curvature. Hands come up and then you're going to, and then exhale for five, and then inhale for five, exhale for five. All right, so as you work through this, you do that 10 times, over time, work on lowering your legs and then you'll get good progression that way. Now, what happens if you tell me, well, Siamara, even here, I did everything you told me, I'm keeping this distance, I have good, and um, I'm still getting neck pain. Well, you might not have good enough curvatures likely what's happening there, and your core might just be too weak to support you. So let's talk about four exercises that you can do in order to really open up, specifically through that mid-back, and how to get those deep flexors activated. For that first exercise, we're gonna start out with some chin tucks, which is really going to get those deep cervical muscles really activated. Now, I have a yoga block here, but you can also grab a towel, um, a pillow, and put it between your legs. So we'll lay back on the ground for this, and you're gonna to wanna to squeeze that between your legs. So the purpose of this is that it's immediately going to get your core more engaged and your hamstrings also engaged, right from the beginning as you are laying down. Then I want you to take your arms and put them above your head because the moment that you lift your arms, your chest muscles basically cannot fire up. All right, after that, I want you to check your head positioning. So again, don't do this where you have your head really far back. And I want you to try to get your neck instead, your chin directly in line with your body. So when I say, tuck your chin a little bit. I don't want you to bring your chin to your neck in this manner. Same thing like as if you had a ball here, right? So you wanna keep that distance between your chest and your, um, your chest and your chin. You wanna be like everything stacked. All right, so put your hands overhead and then you're gonna pretend like as if somebody is pulling you with a, like a line through your body, like somebody has a hand on their, uh, their hand on your hair or you put your own hand in your hair and you're going to literally just like as somebody's pulling here with your deep cervical muscles you're going to feel that pressure come up and if you when you, you know you're going to be doing it correctly because it's going to feel like a choking sensation all right so if you go to pull and you immediately feel the outside of your neck that means that your external, your sternal classomastoids are taking over, which is not what we want, all right? So check your jaw positioning. Check, uh, put your fingers underneath your jaw and just make sure that's relaxed. That will help make sure that those outer neck muscles are also relaxed. So I'm gonna have my hands up. I'm gonna bring one to my jaw, make sure I'm nice and relaxed here. And then I'm literally gonna try to pretend like somebody's pulling me up through my head by using my neck muscles, which should create a choking sensation. All right, so let me try that. Watch my neck. All right, and right there. <laughs> so that felt really weird. Now, if I were to be doing a lot of neck, this is what it would look like instead. So you see how that just flared out? All right, so that's the difference. I'm gonna sit up so that you can see it. So it'll be like, that it's neck movement, 
Let's see if I can recreate the other pool like I'm choking. It would be like that. <laughs> so literally you saw how I got a little taller with that movement um, and my tongue felt like it was being sucked into me. All right. So you want to try to do that five to 10 times to really get those deep neck muscles activated. All right, for the next one, we're gonna do some thoracic, upper thoracic mobility. So let's grab a chair or move on over to your sofa. I've got my chair here, and then I'm gonna take my elbows and I'm gonna bring them so that they are 90 degrees in line with my shoulders, and I'm gonna clasp my hands together. Then I'm going to bring my head between my elbows and tuck my pelvis under to create that straight line in my back. And when I do this, I'm gonna let my head relax between, um, between my head, and I'm going to feel a nice big stretch in that upper back down to my shoulder blades. So it looks like this, clasp your hands together. All right, so when I'm in this position, I'm going to exhale and try to rock my hips back, and you're gonna feel an even bigger stretch in that upper back, and then come out of it. Again, very slowly exhale, bring it back. Now you can play around with this one a little bit. If you want on the way up, bring your head up. Then again, bring it down and extend, drop down here, making sure to keep your back nice and up. So don't allow your chest or your back to curve down. When you come here, don't let this occur with some rounding. Keep it nice and straight as you move your head to really open up through that upper back. All right, voila. So do that again, five to 10 times. Move nice and slowly and your upper back is gonna feel great. Continuing on with that spinal mobility and stiffness, let's grab a foam roller and now we're gonna work more on that mid back. All right, so this is a pretty classic one. You're going to lay on here, but you wanna make sure to never roll onto your low back, okay? So that's the lumbar part of your spine. We never wanna be there. We wanna be in the center in the thoracic section of it, all right? So put your hands behind your head for support here, and then we're gonna bring our hips up, and we're gonna very slowly, very, very slowly, think about like an inch every 10 seconds, so roll on up until we find a tight spot, when we find a tight spot, we're just gonna hold, hold onto that pressure goes away. I like to tuck my head in here to get more surface area on that foam roller. So just roll, find a nice tight spot. Now, generally try to find one to two. If you've never done this before, you might find more tight spots, but focus on two at a time at most. If you've done this several times, you might feel pretty good. Maybe you only find one, but try to see how you're doing. It might be different on day to day how you are feeling too. All right, so now once you have the mid back kind of pressure points, um, pressure points loosen, which is where we tend to be the most tight because we sit in this manner and on our center, it gets really, really stretched. Um, now let's work on some mobility through that center spine. We're gonna come on onto our hands and knees and we're gonna do some cat-cow mobility here. All right, so I want you to start out with your feet, hip distance apart, feet, um, your toes curled, and your hands are directly underneath um, your shoulders, everything nice and stacked. And here I have a flat back. All right, now here's where we're gonna start. We're gonna go into flexion, so that one tends to be pretty easy. You're gonna think through the center here of your back or bra strap if you're a female wearing a bra. And you're going to, through that point, the center of your back, go into flexion here by bringing everything down. Your pelvis should move, your head should move. All right, and then in the opposite manner, come back into neutral and then bring your spine up by moving slowly through this point. And I think this is the hardest one for people. So check this out. We're going to rotate, 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 and then come back. All right, so one more time. Notice where the, I am initiating the movement from right here. 
All right, so that is good spine mobility. What you'll notice sometimes if you move, especially if you move too quickly, what will happen is that you'll immediately just do this. <laughs> and you see how the movement was initiated through my neck and my shoulders and my chest. So I did this. So you see how much higher this point is in my upper body. Whereas when you move systematically and you think about the center back, you are trying to come on up. And then yes, this is going to come up, but it's not going to be the first thing that moves. All right. So I really recommend that you do that in front of a mirror or you record yourself, maybe flip your phone into selfie mode so that you see what you look like and really try to get that motion from that center back. All right. So there you have it. Work on those four exercises to really start to open up your body and get it nice and loose. Those deep cervical uh, muscles, the chin tuck, the very first exercise we went through to strengthen your neck as you're finally using those muscles to help decrease neck pain during Pilates 100. And here's a little secret. It's also gonna help you with your posture overall, especially if you sit at a computer all day long, if you're somebody who tends to be more hunched over with their head really, really forward. These are also phenomenal exercises for you to try. All right, so I hope you like this video. Make sure that you give it a thumbs up below. And again, if you have not yet, make sure you hit the subscribe button below. I will see you for the next video. Bye, everybody.